Here is a vector of the first nine natural numbers. The three by three reshape gives us a three row, three column matrix. Which of the items of the matrix are members of this vector? One for yes, zero for no. And we'll call this Boolean matrix R. We can embed R in a slightly larger matrix, the five by seven take of R, which pads below and on the right with zeros. And we can center our original within this by doing the neg two rotate around a vertical axis and the neg one rotate around a horizontal axis. And we'll call this larger matrix uppercase R. Here is a vector of three matrices. And we can see this more clearly if we copy in a library function also written in APL, which draws boxes around subarrays. The one by zero by neg one rotate each distributes the rotation between corresponding items in the left and right argument vectors. So we see our original zero rotated in the center with a one and a neg one rotation on either side. And we can simplify this slightly by having just one copy of R, which is enclosed to form a rank zero array, which is distributed to each item in the left argument vector. So we get the same result. Next we'll do the one by zero by neg one outer product column rotation. And outer product takes each item of the left argument and distributes the function between it and each item of the right argument. So we get a table or a matrix, in this case a three by three matrix, with our original in the center surrounded by all possible one rotations. And if we do a column sum of the three by three matrix, we get a three vector. And if we sum the vector, we see a neighbor count for each cell in our original matrix R. And the rules of Conway's game of life are that we have a one in the following generation if the neighbor count including self is a three, or if the neighbor count including self is a four, and the original cell was occupied. So firstly, let's find the threes and fours. There they are. And we're interested in any three and a four corresponding to an occupied cell, which is just our original matrix R. So we end those. And both of these matrices contribute to the next generation. So if we all them together, and disclose the result, we see a simple matrix for the next generation in the game of life. So here we have a single array expression for the next generation and you'll notice that it contains no explicit loops and no temporary variables and that the size of the matrix R is not specified anywhere so that the expression is applicable to a matrix of any size. Let's abstract this as a function by wrapping it in curly braces and changing all occurrences of R to formal parameter omega. So this is a function and we'll call this function life. Let's test it. There are the first three generations. And we can abstract this progression by making a function gen for generation, which is life to the power of the right argument applied to the left argument. So R bound with gen applied to each of the first four numbers gives us four generations. Next, let's make a larger arena still. So double R is the 15 by 35 take of the neg 10 by neg 20 take of R. So this is a 15 by 35 matrix of zeros and ones with our original R in the center. And it's easier to see this if I make a corresponding array of characters. So we'll make a picture which uses a dot and a domino shape corresponding to the zeros and ones in 
RR. I'll open an edit window on this so we can see it. There we are. And now, I'd, uh, finally, I'd like to make an animation of this to show this working. But first of all, you might like to Google dialogue creature. And I'll say more about this in a moment. So to make an animation, all we have to do is to apply the life function under power limit to the original population. And power limit finds a fixed point of its operand function life by applying it successively to generations until the result and argument are identical. Now I'm going to wrap this in an outer function, which is a beta abstraction so it doesn't change anything, except it gives me the opportunity of, as a side effect, with a statement separator, updating our picture variable using the same characters, but this time selected by the argument of the function that is applied by the fixed point operation. And changes in this global variable will be reflected in the edit window, so we should see it working. Before we do so, I'll make just two small refinements. Firstly, I'm not interested in the Boolean result, which is the fixed point, so I'll apply a null function to discard it. And secondly, to have a chance of seeing it working, we need, with another state statement separator, to apply a small time delay. So let's say a delay of uh, an eighth of a second, a reciprocal of eight. And there we see it running. And the way we've coded it with rotations, we've produced life on a torus, so the edges wrap. But it's easy to write simple operators that take our life function as an operand, and the operators produce life on other manifolds, such as an infinite plane, or a Klein bottle, or a Mobius band. And if you Google for dialogue creatures, you'll see a web page which shows how to do this. If you're using Internet Explorer as your browser, then the APL font will download it automatically. But if you have trouble or are using a different web browser, then the page contains details of how to download and install the APL font. So, there you are. Life in APL.